Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Donald Trump's doctors just held a press conference outside of Walter Reed's Medical Center, and there was one thing that really had me very interested in doing some research here. That is the administering of something known as dexamethasone. This is a steroid used to treat inflammation. The World Health Organization says that this is used in hospitalized patients who are critically ill and that it has been shown, at least in preliminary findings, that for patients on ventilators, the treatment was shown to reduce mortality by about one third. And for patients requiring oxygen, mortality was cut by about one fifth. And then the University of Minnesota suggests that the organization recommends the use of systemic systemic corticosteroids for treating patients who have severe or critical coronavirus illness, but not for those with a non-serious case of COVID. This is interesting. So Donald Trump has now taken Regeneron's monoclonal antibody cocktail. Now he's taken his second dose of remdesivir. His oxygen has dropped twice below 95%. We now know that Donald Trump was confirmed to have received oxygen for about two hours before going to Walter Reed's Medical Center. And then when asked again if Donald Trump had been administered any oxygen on Saturday when his blood oxygen levels fell to 93%, the doctor said, I'd have to check with nursing to see if we've had a second round. I'm not quite sure why they're being so mysterious. They also were asked during questions, hey, well, like, what have you found on CT scans or ultrasounds of Donald Trump's organs? And they're saying, well, we haven't really seen anything other than what we would expect clinically. Which is like, okay, so what is it that you would expect? Because you're now administering remdesivir and the monoclonal antibody cocktail, which gave Donald Trump heart palpitations on Friday when he had a 103 degree fever. And now you're also giving him steroids that the World Health Organization and the University of Minnesota, Minnesota, excuse me, suggests is only for patients who have severe or critical COVID illness, but not for non-serious disease. And then at the end or towards the end of the press conference, they say that we're not necessarily trying to hide something. Like, what? <laughs> now, let me just play some of these clips so you could see this. I'm going to stitch this together here uh, and, and then we'll come right back. Since we spoke last, the president has continued to improve. As with any illness, there are frequent ups and downs over the course. Over the course of his illness, the president has experienced two episodes of transient drops in his oxygen saturation. It is a determination of the team, based predominantly on the timeline from the initial diagnosis, that we initiate dexamethasone. Late Friday morning, when I returned to the bedside, the president had a high fever, and his oxy oxygen saturation was transiently dipping below 94%. Given these two developments, I was concerned for possible rapid progression of the illness. I recommended the president we try some supplemental oxygen, see how he'd respond. Regarding his clinical status, the patient uh, continues to improve. Uh, he has remained without fever uh, since Friday morning. His vital signs are stable. Uh, from a pulmonary standpoint, he remains on room air this morning uh, and is not complaining of shortness of breath or other significant respiratory symptoms. He's ambulating uh, himself, walking around the White House medical unit without uh, limitation or disability. Uh, the president yesterday evening completed his second dose of remdesivir. And if he continues to look and, and feel as well as he does today, our hope is that we can plan for a discharge as early as tomorrow to the White House where he can continue his treatment course. We debated whether we'd even start it, uh, the dexamethasone. And we decided that uh, in this case, the potential benefits early on the course probably outweighed any risks at this time. Did, did you give him a second round of supplemental oxygen yesterday? Uh, I'd have to I'd have to check with the nursing staff. Uh, um, I don't think that if he did, it was very very limited. Uh, but it's not on oxygen, um, and, and the only oxygen that that I ordered or that we provided was. Uh, that Friday morning initially. And about what time was it? What do the uh, x-rays and CT scans show? Are there signs of pneumonia? Are there signs of lung involvement uh, or any damage to the lungs? Yeah, so we're tracking all of that. Um, there's some expected findings, but nothing of uh, any major clinical concern. I didn't want to give uh, any, uh, any information that might uh, steer the, uh, the course of illness in another direction. Um, and in doing so, uh, you know, it came off uh, that we were trying to hide something, which wasn't necessarily true. 
Okay, you tell me, but going through that, this is this is not as rosy as I think they're making it out to be. Now, I don't want to be a fear monger here at all, and I wish the best for the president, knock on wood. But let me just say, as somebody who's watching this, I am very suspicious, especially when this is what I find out about the steroid that they're now administering to Donald Trump. Now, in fairness, even though the World Health Organization suggests maybe we shouldn't use steroid treatments unless somebody is critically ill, Nature.com had an article where they interviewed scientists and found that research suggests that the potential benefits of a steroid treatment could outweigh the potential harm. In fact, some studies have found no adverse events from treatment at all for using dexamethasone during a COVID case. So in this example, or at least in this finding, maybe they're just deciding, all right, what other drugs do we have on our shelf? And let's just give everything we got to Donald Trump, which in fairness, he is the president. But on one side, it does kind of make you scratch your head if dexamethasone is usually reserved for people who are getting supplemental oxygen or they're on a ventilator. Why all of a sudden is Donald Trump receiving it already if he's only had oxygen once before he came to the hospital? Maybe he's actually getting oxygen more than we're being told. This is something to pay attention to, especially if you are uh, exposed to any kind of stock market right now with short-term trades uh, or you're heavily margined or something like that. Be careful. We're on day four right now. In the next four days, we'll be at day eight. And that's when Boris Johnson's condition switched to the worst case scenario. And he went into the ICU. Now, fortunately, Donald Trump has access to medications that Boris Johnson did not have access to. But day eight is still the potential turning point. Now, it's a little odd that one of the doctors today is saying, oh yeah, maybe we can discharge Trump from the hospital tomorrow. Really? You're going to discharge Trump right before the critical day eight? You're going to discharge him on day five? I think this is just being said right now to uh, quell uh, concerns. But uh, every time it seems like they talk, we start scratching our heads a little bit more. And again, this isn't like taking political sides here. This is simply scratching my head going, um... This makes me want to make sure I have my life insurance up to date, which you could get in the link down below in as little as five minutes during a pandemic. Anyway, uh, that's just my update and my reaction to this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next video.